All right guys, I have had enough of this old pump and it is time to be out with the old and in with the new. That's right, I bought a new vacuum pump. Uh, this has been a long time coming. I've needed it for a long time. It is time to upgrade this old thing. So here we are, brand new pump. Now at the time that I got this, if you wanted a decent pump, you needed to be, you were looking at spending a good two to three hundred dollars at least for a really good pump, something that you could use continuously, something that pulled a big enough vacuum. And uh, today I was happy to see that there's just that's not the case anymore. I popped on Amazon, I started looking around, I found this thing. This is the Cozy Vacuum TA350 single stage rotary vane vacuum pump. Now, uh, there, there are pros and cons to different kinds of vacuum pumps. This is not an oil free pump, which is what I really, really wanted. But the fact of the matter is, right now at the time of making this video, it's under 60 bucks. And the, the reviews on it were really good. So I'm going to try this thing out, see how it goes. I'm going to run it through the full gamut of tests that I can come up with to see how good this pump actually is and if it's really gonna cut it for our use here in my shop. So let's go ahead and pop open the, the packaging. manual comes with the oil so you don't have to buy your own oil for it and there she is all right first thing I love about this thing is the size this is a half the size of my old one um, it, the quality seems nice. It's a cast, it looks like a cast aluminum housing. Um, I can't wait to see how this goes. So we're gonna, I'm gonna run this through a bunch of tests. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look at how much vacuum can this actually pull. Can I get a good 27, 28 inches at least of a vacuum with this pump? I wanna look at the leak rate. Once I turn the pump off, does it leak inside the pump internally? Um, because this thing leaks like a sieve. Uh, once you turn the pump off, it's just gone. Um, but I want to see, does this thing hold the vacuum after you've turned it off? I want to see how loud it is. What's the noise level that this thing produces? Is it going to be loud, too loud to be, is it going to be obnoxious in your shop? And then perhaps one of the most important things is, is it good enough for continuous use? Or do you have to have some kind of a vacuum switch on it uh, so that, you know, with, with a big vacuum pot? And so it'll recycle, turn on and off as needed. Um, I want to see if I can just plug this thing in and let it run for hours and see how it does. We're going to, I'm going to check the heat. I'm going to check that whether or not it puts out oil vapors. That's one thing that the thing's awful for. Within two minutes, it'll fill a room with oil vapors, and you have to have good ventilation or else you're just going to be miserable and probably get cancer. I want to see how well this thing does. Does it put off the same level of oil vapors? So those are the tests I'm going to run on it. Let's go ahead and get to it and see how it does. Before we can do our tests, we need to put some oil in the pump. And it comes with the oil. They have clear directions in the manual on how to do this. It's pretty simple. You're just going to open up the valve. Not the valve. The cap. And it says to fill it until it's between the min and the max fill lines. There we go. All right, first of all, how loud is this pump? Let's go ahead and see. That's not bad. It's honestly not too bad. Uh, it's quite a bit quieter than my old pump is, and it doesn't vibrate itself off the table, doesn't knock everything over. Um, this isn't too bad. I can have a conversation next to this pump. I've seen quieter before, but it's, it's honestly not too bad. I wouldn't mind having this thing running in my shop as far as the noise level for long periods of time. It wouldn't be burdensome, it wouldn't be annoying. All right, next, how good of a vacuum does this pump actually pull? So I'm gonna hook up to a vacuum uh, gauge and we can actually see. It looks like we're getting, right now, just under 25 and a half inches of mercury. So maybe 25.4 inches mercury. So I looked it up and a perfect vacuum at my elevation is actually 26.3. So we're not getting quite a perfect vacuum, but that's actually not bad. 25.4, that's enough to get you pretty much any, any composites that you're going to be making in your home shop. I can't see you having an issue with this. In fact, I bet it'll even work just fine for resin infusion. Right, next I want to see what the leak rate is on this machine. 
Let's go ahead and turn it off and see how quickly it loses vacuum. All right, so we lost quite a bit at first. I mean, it looks like we're settling right around 20 inches of mercury, and it's dropping very, very slowly now. So we do have a little bit of a leak rate. Um, I wonder if we can clean that up with just a little bit of bag sealant tape. All right, let's try this again. Pull it back up to a full vacuum, and let's see how we do. So we are still losing a little bit, and it's not just in my fittings, I can hear the, the gurgling inside the pump. So we're actually losing some vacuum from within the pump. Uh, so it's not a perfect solution. Uh, I wonder if we can get this fixed with just uh, adding a little bit of oil. I'm gonna play with that a little bit and see what we can do. All right, after reviewing the manual a little bit further, it says that you should fill it up halfway between the minimum and the max, and then turn the pump on for about a minute, which we did, and then it says to top it off and fill it up to the oil level line. Well, guess what? There is no oil level line anywhere on this window. So I'm not sure where it's supposed to be filled to. If that means that it should be filled up to the maximum or if it means it should be filled up lower, I'm not entirely sure. We're going to put a little bit of oil in and we're going to see how much better vacuum we can get it to hold once the, with, with a little bit more oil in it. Just kind of gradually work it a little bit at a time. All right, it looks like that's all it took. I pulled it up to 25.4 inches again, and now it is holding solid even with the pump turned off. So it just needed a little bit more oil. Looks like the right place to have it is somewhere between half and three quarters of the way up between the minimum and the max. Um, I don't want to go too much more than that because if you get too much, I I've heard that you can uh, that you can actually have oil get sucked into your line, and that's not what I want, obviously. So. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at that oil level, and it looks like it's working great. It holds a really, really good vacuum now. I wanted to check and see how well it would hold over time with that vacuum. So I've now that we've added a little bit of oil in there. So I've left it in there for almost three minutes now, and it has shown zero leak rate. So this is fantastic. This pump is going to hold a good vacuum. It pulls pretty good, and it holds it, which is excellent. All right, the other question that I had is how does this hold up to continuous use? It'd be really nice if I'd be able to use this for a layup and let it run for eight hours and not have to worry about it overheating, not have to worry about it burning up, but just let it sit and run. That way I don't have to worry about making a vacuum switch with a, a chamber and everything so that it cycles on and off as needed, which you know, it's not a bad setup to have, but it would be so much preferable to me to just be able to buy it, plug it in, and let it sit for an eight hour cure. So let's see how it handles running continuously. All right, I'm back. It's been about 35 minutes since I started this thing. It's been running continuously. And first of all, I am just thrilled to death how quiet this thing is. I mean, it's not that there are quieter ones out there, I know, but for goodness sakes, this thing, I can be standing here having a conversation with somebody, and it's like you don't even notice it's there. When I walk through the door, I can't hear it anymore when I walk through the door. This is, I'm tickled to death with this thing. Um, when I walked in the room, I did smell, just, I, I think I smell a hint of oil vapor when I came in. It's not very much. It's a teeny, teeny bit. So if you're going to be working in the same room as this thing while it's running, you might want to have some ventilation for it, or you might want to have a filter for it, or maybe just put it outside and run the tube inside, uh, all of which are, are very viable options. Or you could hook it up to a chamber and have a, a vacuum switch and let it cycle. Um, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about it from this from my stuff. It's not going to coat everything in my shop with oil vapor like our old one used to do. So, uh, from the oil vapor standpoint, not perfect, but it's actually really, really good. Now, temperature-wise, this is it's a little bit warm. I'm not going to lie. Um, it did get a little bit warm after 35 minutes of running continuously. Not so hot that I'm actually worried about it, though. I mean, I can put my hand on it. It's 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 warm to the touch. It is not hot. Um, taking a, a infrared thermometer. We're reading about 
Let's see, see if I can actually get her in a good spot. 122 is what it's showing. 122 degrees. So it's a little bit warm, but like, I don't think that's gonna be the ruining thing by any means. The other one gets so hot that you burn yourself if you touch it. So this is actually quite an upgrade. I'm comfortable letting this thing run for an eight hour, 12 hour cure cycle um, while I'm making a part. I'm very, very comfortable with this thing. Um, time will show how well it holds up to longevity, to just, just the durability of the product. But it, it appears that everything's made well enough that it's just gonna be good enough for continuous use. Another really cool thing. I went ahead and let it run for a while, and you can, you can see we're up to 26.3 inches of mercury. We have practically a full vacuum on this thing now, because that's the best that I possibly can get at my elevation today, is about 26.3 inches. So we are getting a dang near perfect vacuum. I didn't expect to be able to get that from a pump that cost 60 bucks. All right guys, bottom line, I love this pump. I am tickled to death with it. It has outperformed everything like I'd expected of it. Now, it is not perfect. Yes, you can get smaller ones, you can get uh, quieter ones, you can get ones that, uh, that don't have oil, that, that you, know, you don't have to worry about oil vapors at all. But the bottom line is, guys, you're not gonna get them for this price point. Absolutely not. For under 60 bucks, you're not gonna get a better pump, I don't, I don't think. Um, I am absolutely just pleased, pleased as punch with this thing. And I can't wait to start making some carbon fiber parts with it. I went ahead and threw a link in the notes for this video to this pump if you want to go buy it from Amazon. So go ahead and click on that link if you want to pick one up for yourself. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoy your pump as much as I am enjoying mine. Thanks.